Is this like a science fiction movie? <laughs> yeah. I listened to this and I went, wow, an implant in your brain to like give you a little zh every time you start to feel oh, a little, bit, little right? bit depressed, a no, little bit sad. You, you just a get blood. a shot of yeah. zh. We are worried about the symptoms, but not what's causing the yes. symptoms. Why are we going from 20% depression rates or mental health issues to 80%? Across a lifetime, that is. And we're, time, that we're is. thinking about being able to press a button to feel better rather than to look at the causes for that. Yeah. So in our latest Work Life magazine, we spoke about the topic of body and mind connection for mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share with you an article that I came across uh, that was published by the BBC just today. Okay. And it kind of takes that idea even further. So mm -hmm. the article is a, it's titled, could new implants treat depression, dementia, and chronic pain? Right. So I'll just read you out a little bit from the article here. It says that a partnership of people from the health, science, and business sectors in Cambridge have been awarded millions of pounds to fast track new technologies to improve brain health. So basically they're giving uh, designers and innovators the opportunity to test their ideas and those that are most promising are going to be supported to make them into treatments for patients basically. Uh, so one of these is a professor at the University of Cambridge whose team are developing brain implants to treat neurological and mental health conditions which they say affects four out of every five people at some point in their life. So will, will affect, yeah. It used to be 50% of people at some point in their yeah. life will experience a mental yeah, health we'll problem. Now that. we're talking about 80%. So that was interesting mm. to me, number one. But what they're saying is these brain implants um, could be effective uh, for uh, conditions that are untreatable or that aren't managed well by pharmaceutical medications. And they say we're talking about things like brain and spinal cord injuries, Parkinson's disease, dementia, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, arth rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. So a whole range of different things, but including the mental health right. diagnoses as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. And so these implants send out electrical impulses that change the way the neurons behave in the brain so that they can either eliminate pain or they can re-stimulate certain parts of the brain. Is this like a science fiction movie? <laughs> yeah. I listened to this and I went, wow, an implant in your brain to like give you a little zh every time you start to feel oh, a little, bit, a little right? bit depressed, a Imagine little bit sad, you, you just a get a shot of yeah. zh. Imagine if you have a button that you can press. Um, it's like a yeah, robot. There's, there's, there's a, that, that's an interesting, it, it's interesting uh, studies. I wonder how advanced that is. Mm. Um, what's the difference it sounds very invasive though. Yeah, well... Like, how would you put the implant on the brain? The other thing is, we are worried about the symptoms, but not what's causing the yes. symptoms. Why are we going from 20% depression rates or mental health issues to 80%? Across a lifetime, that is. We're yeah. thinking about being able to press a button to feel better, rather than to look at the causes for that. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Why are they expecting that? Yeah. So a lot of questions that come up to my mind in that. Would it be a wonderful technology if it's used properly? Yes. But there you think? are issues it too. It scares me. It scares me a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's issues. I mean, but if, they have if, done if, it already. So in 2021 in the US, they've already started using brain implants the size of a matchbox. Hmm. Um, so yes, invasive. but. Hmm. And the comparison is that we've been using electroconvulsive therapy for years and that was not good. It's still being used and you know, people have different experiences with that. Obviously there's a lot of negative side effects. But what they're saying is by instead having a smaller implant, it you can monitor the feelings more subtly, the subtle nuances and changes, you can monitor that and then you can give a gentle little shock instead of going in for a full on ECT treatment every so often. So that's the but idea that it's right. the surgery so you're still itself. still frying the brain. It's just a little bit less. It <laughs> and, and then, then there's, I mean, there's, there's the, the, with these things, there are always the potential for it falling into the wrong hands. I mean, who is going to be in charge? Because it, eventually it'll be an app on your phone. Who's going to be in charge of that app? So Who's you can overdose on, on electric. <laughs> on electric. <laughs> on electric. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's me, all really interesting, but I, it doesn't talk about the cause, yeah. and it doesn't also talk about recovery from these things. Mm. It's about ongoing management, yeah. managing symptoms mm. as if you could never get rid of that. For me, I think there's a difference between some of the conditions that they mentioned there that are more physical and neurological in That's nature, true. things like Parkinson's, which my, my dad had. And yeah. you know, at that point when you're so unwell, it's like, well, hey, try anything. If yeah. it's gonna make me feel better, make me move better, then yeah, let's go for it. Um, but you know, that's, we understand, even though it's not very well understood, it's better understood as a physical condition. Whereas a mental health issue is more of the mind, it's more of the emotions. So again, like kind of what you said, what's the underlying cause? Can you really treat something non-physical with a physical treatment like that? I guess you can alleviate the symptoms. You could. You but could. equally, so but you can do that with medication too. And then Let's say that, uh, which this happens a lot in therapy, mm. and the person that is coming to you with a mental health problem, mm. the cause of that is because they're in a toxic relationship. Okay, yeah. Now, are we gonna give them this so they feel better with a button every time, but they still yeah. remain in a toxic and dangerous yeah. relationship? So there's a lot of issues that come mm. up with this. If we're only addressing symptoms, which is fantastic, don't get me wrong, <laughs> you want yeah, to remove the, the pain. There's yeah. no issue with that. However, you know, there's too much focus on that. Yeah. If there's too much focus on that, what have we done? Yeah. Watch this space. Uh, I am I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ambivalent on this type of research. Uh, but it's still interesting. Well, at the end of the day, I think everybody's choice how they want to address their own, yeah. you know, yes. well-being concerns. Well, I don't think I'm ready to. I'm not an early adopter, though. I'm not no. ready to jump into yes. new things very easily. Well, from what you're saying, it doesn't seem to be an early adoption. It's a later adoption wow. of a of a highly controversial and dangerous modality, which is ECT. Um, and they're trying to make it a little bit more self-controlled, but you know, um, who is going to be pressing the button? Who is going to be deciding? Uh, maybe it's automatic. Uh, it, oh. it automatically monitors it, and it, when it feels you're getting a little bit low, it AI. Pops you, pops your AI is controlling <laughs> right. your mood. What happens if AI decides that you're not worth keeping around? I don't know. <laughs> who knows? That's my big question. Would you do it? I would not be rushing out there to say, yep, stick an implant in my brain to make me Ooh, feel. But it is no different to saying, I'll, you know, pushing the app to give me a boost or something is no different from saying, let me have another glass of wine to make me feel better. It's the same self-medication, isn't it? You're still dealing with the symptoms. You're not dealing yeah. with the cause. Yeah. But is it so bad just that it happens to be yes. inside your head with yes, a, with a button I'll instead tell you of... Because if you're dealing with the symptoms and not the cause, you're never solving the problem. Yeah. But that's the with. same problem we have with medication now, self-medication, whether it's legal, you know, antidepressants or whether it's yeah, but wine we, we or... Yeah, you don't tell people to keep doing it. You don't say to an alcoholic, alcoholic you have got a mental health problem, so keep drinking. <laughs> just, you know, just self-regulate. You don't do that. So why would you do it with this? True. Yeah. You know. You know, it, the expectation, not, I mean, this is only designed for people with severe, mark, untreated... It's not the mark of intelligence to, to not solve problems. True. But they're saying this is for people where nothing else is working, so... Well, how many people are in the boat? There's very few people in the I, boat. But you and I know with these things, it starts off just for people with severe issues and then more, it becomes yeah. more and more available, yeah, more and more accessible. To make it more available. Um, I mean... But everyone I mean, wants I a quick guess, fix, right? Look, look, it's extremely tempting and attractive. But that's extremely tempting and attractive for everything in life. Yeah. I mean, what if we could wish, if we could press a button and all our problems disappear and we press another one and all of a sudden all our dreams appear? At what point would we lose our humanity? <laughs> <laughs> Very it's attractive, it's but true. it's not, it's not how it's supposed to be. There is a progression with what we call the growth of the human being or becoming human, mm. which is an interesting expression, on becoming human is that we have to go through certain trials and certain learning and that learning doesn't feel good and it's the winning yeah. over that, those 
emotions and experiences which round us up as human beings. Yeah. And that's when we find happiness. We don't chase happiness. We find it as a side effect of our growth. Yeah. But if I have an app in which I can press the button, yeah. I will never be happy because I will never be rounded. Mm. I will miss out on the, that whole experience. So that's the problem yeah. with this kind of solutions which are really attractive, but they have holes in them. Yeah. And we know because you know, in therapy, we, we see people's um, yearning for feeling better. Yeah. And at the same time, we know as psychologists and therapists that we can only hold a space so they go through their digestion, yeah. their, their suffering in a sense. Yeah. They have to go through that, the growing pains. Yeah. In order to come out on the other side and people who and feel really good, people then people who do come out on the other side say that was a transformation. Exactly. You know, I don't want to go back there, but yeah. many of them will say, I don't want to go back to that, yeah. but it it did transform me. It did get me to where I am now. I, yeah. I'm grateful for having been through those challenges and come out the other side as and, well. And this is one of the things that people sometimes have taken the medical establishment or the health establishment as the reason not to go through that transformation. I have a problem. I have uh, high levels of sugar in my blood, right? So I'm about to develop diabetes. Can you give me a pill doctor so I don't have to stop my sugar consumption? Yeah. I have to change nothing. Yeah. But we know that's not yeah. a solution. We know, no, you gotta stop eating sugar. Yeah. But I really like it. I really like my sugar. I know. I'll chuck a tantrum if you take I my know. sugar away. It's my right. I deserve it. But we know that's not where growth is. Growth is in the other side. You know, you stick to it, yeah. you change, you find self discipline, yeah. you do what you need to do, and you come out transformed. On I the have other to side. tell you, it's so hard though. <laughs> I mean, I went to the doctor a few weeks back with a tummy upset. And I really just wanted him to give me some medication to yes. make it all better. And I was so disappointed when he came out and said, you have to eat chicken and white rice for the next couple That's of days, it. you'll be fine. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to eat my yummy food. <laughs> but it's like, for real, it was something yeah. so simple like that. And I was I really just wanted him to give me a pill. And he did the right thing as a doctor and said, yeah. just and these little tweaks. we're not knocking pills out. We're not yeah. knocking them out. You know, when you have a, 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 a very high degree of pain, which it can be very, very difficult and you want some relief. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course. Yeah. So that's, that's Let's where Let's see what happens in this space. Um, it's it's yeah. an interesting one. I'd be interested to see where the research yeah. goes. I want to know if our audience would have an implant in their Yeah, head. would you have to take <laughs> one of these implants? Imagine that an implant to an app can make you feel better, but only if you have a mental health problem. So it's not for Aww. normal people. <laughs> well, if we self-diagnose, then we it? can all have right. one. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones. Thank you.